हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू अवर न्यू लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे वी डिस्कस अबाउट द मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द मेटल इन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मटीरियल लेट एस स्टार्ट अवर न्यू लेक्चर और मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द मेटल द मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टी मे बी डिफाइंड द डिफरेंट कंटेंट लाइक इलास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन इंटरप्रेशन ऑफ टेंसाइल स्पेसिस एंड स्ट्रेन एल्डिंग क्राइटेरिया एल्डिंग अंडर मल्टी एक्सीएल स्पेसिस Yield criteria, microscopic aspect of plastic deformation, and property variability and design consideration. First of all, whenever we have to apply the external load on the object, the object may be divided into a three category. It may be a translation, it may be a rotation, or it may be a deformation. The deformation may be divided into two category. First one is a distortion, and second one is a change in size that means a uh, distortion that means a change in shape and deletion where change in size that's called a uh, deformation it is called a uh, deformation a deformation function of the time may be divided into uh, two category it may be elastic and it may be a uh, plastic what do you mean by elastic and what do you mean by plastic deformation the elastic deformation is a temporary and it can be a recoverable but a plastic deformation it can be a permanent that cannot be a recoverable whenever you have to apply the load on an object and you have to remove the load after this time the deformation that's called a elastic deformation in a in a plastic deformation whenever you have to apply a load after removal of the load the object will does not contain or retain its original shape and size that's called a plastic deformation under this deformation the an elastic and a creep may be a effect during a machining process so under the load an elastic that means under load and creep that means under the temperature of the load so first we have to discuss what do you mean by stress and what do you mean by strain this is the main important two criteria you have to understand the strength of the material first we have to define a stress stress that means when some external system of force or load act on a body the internal force are set up at the various section of the body which resist the external forces the internal force per unit area at any section of the body that's called a unit stress that means simply stress so sigma equal to p by a where p is a force or load acting on the body where a is a cross sectional area of the body in si unit it may be in a measure in a pascal 1 pascal equal to 1 newton per meter square when whenever you have to define a strain strain that means when a system of a force on a body it undergoes some deformation this deformation is called a unit length in a is known as a unit strain or a simply a strain so strain equal to delta l divided by l where delta l equal to change in length of the body where l is the original length of the body according to this stress and strain engineering stress and strain may be defined like that a load applied act and over area that means load may be applied on whole area those area may be a parameter that characterize the load effect is given as a load divide by the original area over which the load act it is simply called a conventional state or engineering stress so corresponding we have to find out a change in length to the original length so s we have to find out the stresses so p s equal to p by a0 where we have to find out engineering strain equal to l minus l0 divided by l0 that means change in length to the original length l minus l0 equal to change in length where l0 is a original length as a object changes its dimension under applied load engineering stress and strain are not be the two reason two representative so we have to find out two stresses and two strain those are natural stresses and natural strain so we have to find out total epsilon equal to lg l1 minus l0 divided by l0 plus l2 minus l1 divided by l1 plus l3 minus l2 divided by l3 
dot 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 extra so epsilon equal to we have to apply a limit to l0 into l d, dl by dl equal to l by l0 same to same you have to find out here two strain stasis sigma equal to p by a so p by a0 into a0 by a so we have to find out s into e plus 1 different load under a different section that means uh, for the rectangular section for the uh, circular section it may be a tapoidal for the circular section that means uh, for the tensile deformation you have to apply the external load you have to apply external load and outside the load will be outside and you have to apply the compressive load at this time it may be a internal side it may be a internal side so in a tensile whenever you you have to apply a stasis it may be increase in length and whenever you have to apply a stage a compressive stage it may be decrease in length so you have to see in a figure elastic deformation what do you mean by elastic deformation a material undergoes elastic deformation first followed by the plastic deformation the translation is not sharp in many instances for most of the engineering material complete elastic deformation is characterized by the strain proportional to strain that means according to slow we have to know stress is directly proportional to strain that means uh, sigma is proportional to epsilon where sigma equal to e into epsilon where e is a young modulus or hooks low according to hooks law stress is directly proportional to strain elastic deformation for the material without linear stress strain portion either a tangent or skint modulus is used in a design calculation that means uh, you have to come uh, here consider a young modulus so young modulus e equal to sigma by epsilon that means p l divide by a into delta air whenever you have to consider a shear stasis and shear strain when a body subject you to equal and opposite forces acting tangentially across the resisting section as a result of which the body tends to shear of this action then the stasis induced is called a shear stasis and strain induced it is called a shear stasis so modulus of rigidity is defined as tau is proportional to phi so tau divide tau equal to c divided by phi so c is a modulus of rigidity now elastic deformation for that material you can see in a figure whenever you have to increase the stasis at this time also strain will be a increase theoretical basis of elastic deformation re reversible deflacement of an atom from the equilibrium position starting of the atom bonds elastic modulus measure a stiffness of a material it can be also measure of a resistance of to separation for the adjustment of the atom elastic modulus is a function of interatomic forces is a function of interatomic distance and is a function of crystal structure orientation for a single crystal elastic module are not isotropic it may be a different for a polystyrene material it is considered as a isotropic elastic module slightly changes with the temperature <coughs> linear and strain always accomplished by lateral strain and linear strain that means the uh, define a poison issue you know okay poison ratio is defined as the lateral strain by linear strain that's called a poison ratio those poison ratio also define uh, that volumetric strain as well as the bulk modulus we have to define a volumetric strain that means it is the ratio of change in volume to the original volume that's called a volumetric strain so delta v divided by v that's called a volumetric strain bulk modulus is defined as when a body is subject to, to a three per mutually perpendicular stasis of equal intensity the ratio is direct stress to the corrupt corresponding volumetric strain that's called a bulk modulus so those will be defined bulk modulus and volumetric strain so all modules are related to poison ratio we know g equal to e divided by 2 into 1 plus v where k equal to sigma n divided by delta where k is a bulk modulus so k equal to e divided by 3 into 1 minus 2 v 
plastic deformation it it is a permanent deformation whenever you have to apply a load and you have to remove that load after that that cannot sustain its original position that's called a plastic deformation stress strain relation here is a complex because of atomic plane movement of the dislocation movement and the obstacle that truck encounter crystalline solid deform by process slip and twinning in a particular direction amorphous solid deformed by viscous flow mechanism without any direction plastic deformation because of a complexity involved theory of plasticity neglect the following effect inelastic strain and high hysteresis strain which is a time depend and hysteresis behavior resulting from the loading and unloading brusher effect depend of the yield stress on the loading path and the direction those equation may be contained on a two strain strain relation you have to see in a different equation sigma equal sigma is a function of epsilon and a t sigma so sigma equal to k into uh, epsilon raised to n where hardening exponent n equal to 0.1 to 0.5 sigma equal to k into epsilon where strain rate is a sensitivity where m is a 0.4 to 0.5 those are so sig finally sigma equal to sigma 0 plus ke raised to epsilon raised to n where sigma yield strength is a sigma 0 you have to see in this diagram whenever we have to emphasize two stresses at this time two strain will be different also load condition on load elongation on two stress strain diagram you have to see and a pink line shows that whenever you have to increase the strain in at this time stress will be also increase you have to see on a, the stress strain count diagram that means whenever you add after ultimate stress a point will be a defect uh, fracture that means uh, after that ultimate stress and necking will be a uh, started here also you have to see in a different position of the uh, different points that means here you have to see is a starting point of the materials is indicated by a o where a is a proportional limit o is a proportional limit that means it represents a hook slow after a point b you have to see an elastic limit after a b you have to see elastic limit c is a upper yield point where d is a lower yield point after that e is a ultimate stress and f is a necking point those stresses and strain apart from the different stresses and stress point to whatever you have to find out those parameter can be defined from the curve so resilience will be defined to ability to absorb energy under elastic deformation so first of all we have to understand those property those directly depend upon the material those property is like that strength is defined as the ability of two material or resist the externally applied forces where stiffness is defined as it is the ability of material to resist deformation under stress elasticity you have to define it is the property of a material to retain its original shape after deformation when the external force are removed plasticity is defined as a material which re remains the deformation produced under the load so this property of material is necessary for the forging ductility that means it is a property of material enabling to drawn into a wire with the application of tensile forces brittleness that means uh, it is a property of material opposite to a ductility malleability that means it is a special case of ductility which permit a material to be rolled or hammered into a sheet toughness is defined as uh, it is the property of material to resist a fracture due to high impact load like uh, hammer blow resilience is defined as it is a property of material to absorb energy and to resist shock and impact load a creep may be defined as when a part of is subject to a constant stress at a high temperature for a long period of time it will be undergo slow and permanent deformation called a creep and last one is a fatigue fatigue may be defined as when a material is subject to a repeated state it fail stress below the yield point stasis such type of failure is known as a fatigue stasis you have to see different definition of this yielding criteria under multi-axial loading you have to see one figure here when applied yielding load 
on that material you have to send one set of necking will be there that means a necking will be started after ultimate stage when you have to apply the ultimate stage after that point at the radius curvature you have to see the necking point so necking point is create after a ultimate stage those yield criteria it may be a one mysis or distortion and energy criteria yielding occur one second invariant of stage deviator reaches a critical value in other arms yield start once the distortion energy reaches the critical value so j2 equal to k square where j2 equal to 1 by 6 into sigma 1 minus sigma 2 square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 square uh, during the on axial tension where sigma 1 equal to sigma 0 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 consider will be a 0 so 1 by 6 into sigma 0 plus sigma 0 square equal to k square so sigma 0 equal to root root 3 into k so value of sigma 0 equal to 1 by root 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 3 sigma 1 square so k equal to 1 by root 3 into sigma 0 the value of that is 0 0.57 into sigma 0 where k is a yield under a shear stress those yield criteria you have to find out shear stresses on on axial stresses so tau maximum equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 for under uniaxial stresses sigma 1 equal to sigma 0 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 will be considered 0 so tau maximum equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 so tau 0 equal to sigma 0 by 2 so sigma 1 equal to minus sigma 1 divided by sigma 0 so microscopic except of plastic deformation you have to see the different force we have to apply a force will be deformed into grains and grain will be to initial structure and that will be a denular structure converted the microscopic aspect of plastic deformation you have to see whenever you apply the tensile stasis it may be increase in lean and after that lean uh, elastic deformation will be final final after that uh, uniform plastic deformation will be covered after that uh, uniform plastic deformation will be that initiated non uniform plastic deformation will be created and after uh, ultimate state a uh, necking will be there and a final position property variability that may be uh, considered for the scatter in major property engineering material invariable because of a number of factor will be uh, conducted as a test matter you have to see x bar equal to sigma into xi divided by n where s is the main standard deviation you have to see in a equation so design consideration may be uh, defined those properties to account for the variability and unexpected failure design needs for a considered tolerate property values parameter for the tailoring safety factor and design factor for the both parameters so sigma w equal to sigma y divided by n where sigma d equal to n into sigma c where sigma w equal to working stress sigma y equal to yield state sigma d equal to design stress and sigma c is a calculated stress for those values n is ranges from 1.2 to 1.5 that means uh, those may be defined those uh, bars act or more circle diagram those bearing stress or crossing stress you have to also consider for that beam or for that particular area a localized compressive stress at the structure surface of the contact between the two members that are relatively at rest is known as the bearing stress or crushing stress. The bearing stress is taken into account in a rivetage joint. Those is a knuckle joint. So consider you have to crushing stress between a two area. Principal stresses and principal strain you have to also consider those area may be, it has been observed that any point in a strain material that are three plane mutually perpendicular to each other which are carry out a direct stresses and no shear stresses a literal consideration will show that the out of these three di direct stresses one will be a maximum the other will be a minimum third 
an intermediate between these two with this particular plane which have a no shear stresses are non principal plane the magnitude of direct stresses across a principal stresses you have to see in force normal to the section divided by area of the section so here to also consider for the bar so stresses due to change in temperature that means a thermal stresses whenever there is some increase or decrease the temperature of the body it causes to expand or contract a later consideration will show that if a body is allowed to expand or contract freely